All right, cool. So cracks, let's get into it. Um, I'm going to start by making a new graph. And we're just going to test a couple things on this first, um, and then go from there. Uh, there we go. So I think like, a lot of people have different recipes for making cracks like this. I think a lot of it just typically starts with boronoid noises. Um, but the thing, you know, as mentioned, like you know, I don't often see people do the tapers where those cracks taper off towards the middle of their objects, like whether it's a brick or a stone tile or any kind of any kind of tile based anything really. Usually, when you see people do these sculpts, you see the cracks sort of taper in towards the middle. Um, a lot of people I see they just have the same width of crack all the way through the shape. So hopefully, this is I, I use this method a lot, um, and hopefully, it's helpful. So to just show it off on a single shape, let's just make a disk and bevel this out as if we had, I don't know, it's an altar or something. And we're just going to lay cracks over top of this and go from there. I'm just going to do a bit of setup first by plugging this into the normal. Let's make that pretty strong. And I'm going to actually dock my 3D view here as well. So people can see what I'm doing. And rounded cube is fine. May as well have it on a plane, actually. Do it on a plane. I'll plug this into height. This is sort of the normal setup I do every time, just so I can see a bit better. Yo. And I want to actually put this into my base color here. I'm just converting it to color so that I can mix it with the gray, multiply it against the base color, and then I'm just going to go to material and turn on displacement quickly, just so we can preview it a bit better. Like this. Perfect. I'm going to brighten up my albedo a bit. Cool. And maybe the AO will just go a bit darker. And I might just quickly put some curvature too. Again, this is just so we have an easier time seeing this. So put that fairly strong for the curvature, and I'm just going to overlay this right at the end, doing the same thing. This should be pretty standard for most people. If you're starting with height, which you should on most graphs, um, this should be really familiar. So I just really want to see this. I say it sort of imitates like a ZBrush matte cap almost. It looks like the matte cap white or something. Obviously, we don't want to bake lighting information into stuff typically if we're doing PBR. Um, this is a pretty decent start. Um, just so we can see. We can always adjust this stuff later. So cracks. A lot of people, like I said, they start with this Voronoi noise, right? The cells four. We're gonna start with that for now, just for simplicity's sake. In another video, I'll go through making kind of your own. Um, in a newer version of Substance, actually, the Voronoi is a bit better. It comes with some other features. Um, but we should at some point talk about making them from scratch yourself because you can you have a lot more control. But for now, we'll do kind of what everyone seems to do, which is to just give us a certain amount of these. We'll just edge detect them to get that the actual cracks. I don't know if I like the roundness. And this is sort of what I see a lot of people do. They'll bevel this. And again, whenever I'm beveling these cracks, we'll go into a different video, but like you should always have, for the most part, you should always be going to full strength in either direction, uh, just to make sure that it's fully closed. And then you can auto level it afterwards just to bring back any range that you may have crushed out, which you will have crushed out. Um, but this feels a lot better. Now, as we change the width of this edge detect, uh, it doesn't matter. We're gonna make sure that this stays fully, fully cranked, right? It's gonna be closed all the time on account of the fact that that, um, Bevel is just set to full strength. The distance is maximum. So you'll do this to get the cracks you like. I personally like to subtract these. Um, I'm not going to do that though right now just because there's some stuff we would have to do to set it up. So instead I'll do kind of like the basic setup, which I feel is most people just multiply this. And this is what I see a lot of the time. You may not want it that strong. You may want to pull it back, whatever. This is sort of where I see it left um, quite a bit. In fact, let's just do that subtract just because I think we're going to like the math a bit better. This actually kind of carves in a bit more reliably. Cool. Subtraction is generally better for this, or min, but in this case it won't help us very much because we won't have any on the edges because the 
the value of the tile underneath, the cracks will be darker so it won't get sorted properly. This is what I see a lot of people kind of stop at, and it's fine. Um, you know, it gets the job done, occasionally you might want that look. Um, but what we're trying to do, right, is get these lines here to taper in, right, just to kind of thin out towards the middle. Um, it's a much uh, more interesting look. So to do that, it's actually pretty simple. Essentially what we want is over here, we want the cracks that are at the, the periphery of our shape to actually be darker and to have these be brighter. And what that's going to allow us to do is chain two bevels together um, so we have two different widths of the edge. So we can actually use something like this guy to prove that out. So I'm going to have a second bevel here in which I close it all the way in. Right, so we just have a, like a full linear gradient right, from full black on the exterior to white in the middle. I'm going to auto level it again just so that I make sure I have my full range. And then I'm going to invert this. Like that. So we have white at the periphery of the object and black in the center. And I'm just going to subtract that from our beveled cracks here. So you'll see when we do this, right, because we subtracted from the outside there, we have a much thicker black line at the edge, and then it tapers into the kind of the original set thickness here. Right, so this kind of becomes almost like the minimum right now, but we're gonna change that in a minute. Um, but you'll see it gets much, much wider towards the end. For the sake of simplicity and having this be on one control, I normally set my subtract to 0.5 here. Um, just so that middle gray is my, I'm assuming, like it's middle gray becomes my middle. And then I histogram scan this. And the histogram scan, because we're subtracting 0.5, should just be 0.5 plus 1. So if we just go to 50, you'll see if I have the contrast all the way up. That looks pretty good. If you go 50 plus 1, we get all the remainder, right? Because if we had it at 0.5, we're just, because this is being subtracted at 0.5, right? We're gonna like, this is gonna be not captured by the histogram scan. So putting this to just 50 plus one, we get the whole shape back. And you see, we get this really nice taper effect. It's really cool. Um, and all we have to do is kind of repeat what we did here again. So this is sort of just utility to get us to this mask. And then we're gonna bevel this. auto level it again to make sure we get our full range back. You see this is a lot cooler. Right? We get this really sweet tapering towards the middle. Um, you know, kind of imitates a lot of the sculpting stuff you see, like with orbs, orb cracks especially, right? All of Michael Vicente stuff. Um, but I think this looks a lot better. And what's really cool is, because this is all set up with just, we have our, histi our, our subtract value set properly at 0.5 and our histogram scan at the same value plus one. Um, if we want to make these wider, we really only have two controls to worry about. The edge detect will just increase um, the maximum width, right? So as we move this up, we're going to increase the width of the cracks at the edge, but these will remain untouched, right? Because they're still being subtracted against that value. So really, it becomes really simple to control, and everything kind of follows with us. Um, if you wanted to, it would actually be pretty easy to parametrize this and make yourself a graph for it, if, you, if this is something you're doing really often. Um, you can parametrize the edge width here and make that a, a parameter on the input. Um, for me, I think it's a simple enough thing that I kind of just do it by hand most times. Um, I should probably make it into a node, um, which maybe we should do at some point. Um, the other thing you might want to do is change how the taper happens, because right now it's pretty linear. Um, if I pop this guy down to 0.5, just as an example, you'll see that it transitions from its thickest value to its thinnest value in a linear way, right? Like it doesn't, it just evenly tapers. So we could add, we could curve that, right? So that it starts just as thick, then it really quickly gets thin, or alternatively, it stays thick for a really long time and then tapers. Um, most people, I think they prefer where it, uh, tapers really quickly and stays thin longer. And the way we do that is just by leveling this mask. 
right? So if we just throw a level here, and this is another good candidate uh, to turn into a parameter if you ever wanted to package this into a node you're going to use over and over. If we put this here, you'll see as we move this, our gray in, we increase the taper. And if we move the gray out, eventually we kind of just return back to the original width. Right, well, we can watch its effects on here. So I have this previewed, but I'm gonna edit the levels gray in. On the middle gray, right, when our level in gray is at 0.5, it's just that linear uh, curve I was describing. If I push the, the level in gray towards black, it just becomes the same width as the original edge detect. But if I push it more towards white, you see we get this kind of bend, right? This really cool um, taper here, which is really neat. It's really cool. And really all you're gonna play with is these two numbers. Your level in mid will control the amount of taper uh, and your edge detect controls the, the maximum width of these cracks. Um, so it's really cool. Like this is something I think it's very easy to do. We should probably set this guy to 50 plus one. Um, very easy to do. Um, and I think adds a lot. Um, I think it's really worth doing. Um, and it's quick. Um, so to see it on a bit of a more practical example and just to go over it again, let's try it with something a bit more, you know, representative of what you might be actually trying to do. So I'm just going to make a six by six grid of squares, give them some random luminance, edge detect that, and then we're sort of doing the same thing. Right, I edge detect this. I don't want them so round. Use a bevel. This is kind of how I always make these shapes for the most part, with some exceptions. So there we go. I'm going to grab this chain. Right, so this is our, our just our Voronoi noise. And same thing, if we were just to start like this, I'll just redirect everything here. I'm holding shift and dragging all those nodes to bring everything over at once. And obviously, this isn't great. We would need to, first of all, I like the subtract there instead of the multiply. And we need to make these much finer. Right? We need more of them. And we need that edge to be way thinner. This is something like this. And maybe that's too small. Maybe we want something like 12 or, or even 11. Like this can be, this can, these can be pretty fine because they're small. And we can bring these up a bit. So exact same thing, right? We have to do the exact same math. We are happy with this initial bevel, but now we need um, a shape on these tiles, a mask essentially, that goes from full white at the edge of the tile to black in the middle of the tile. Right, and then we're gonna invert that or we're gonna subtract that from our, our original beveled shape. So I like just having a separate edge detect here. You can either do that the cheaper option would just be to make another tile generator and link these. Um, and instead of having luminance random here, just scale these down a bit. So you just want a really fine black edge between them, a little, so we can generate that mask. And this is just cheaper than running another bevel, right? Like this, this is like far less expensive. Um, and then we're gonna bevel this. And again, I'm gonna just set this to full and then auto level it like that. So we have that mask we want, but we need to invert this because we want um, white at the edge, black in the middle. We subtract that distance here from our shapes. And there we go. Right, we're getting it tapering towards the middles of the stones, staying fat on the outside. And then again, I like just to keep everything really predictable, 0.51. And then have this guy sit at 0.5 plus one. Make sure your contrast is full. And again, look at the difference. Right at 0.5, we're going to get that black mask, right? The original mask here, which we don't want. Because we don't want to subtract that from our eventual result. Um, but just adding that plus one solves the issue. This is very predictable. And that's what you want whenever you're parameterizing stuff, especially. We want predictability uh, across all of those inputs. So we take this guy. Bevel it. Again, I just set these to full. Oops, that was me moving the history I'm scan. Move all this back. Uh, 
put this in here. And there we go. Probably don't need to be that strong. In fact, on tiles this small, I don't really need them that big at all. And maybe my AO is just a little intense at this point. Cool. So yeah, there's a more practical example, right? We can decide, hey, we want those cracks bigger. Like they start bigger at the edge. They still taper into a finer point towards the middle. And again, if you want, it would probably make some sense. We don't really want these hard transitions in the mask we're subtracting. You could add some smoothing on the bevel or blur it. Right, so I could take a blur because these are so square. Right, just to soften this a bit. Like this. Pretty good. Cool. And then, yeah, if we want to level here, we can control that taper. And again, I kind of tend to bring my level in gray towards white. There you go. So again, I think this is like a very easy way uh, to get a bit more of a interesting look into these types of cracks. There's a lot of ways you can expand on that. Um, I'll definitely make some tutorials in the future about taking this a step further, having some caved in pieces, um, missing chunks, things like that. Um, but for now, I hope that helps. Um, if anyone found this helpful, I'd appreciate if you subscribe, do all the standard YouTube guy stuff, um, YouTube person stuff. Um, subscribe, like the video, share it with friends. Uh, give me ideas for what people want to see next. I have a big laundry list um, of stuff that was just generated through all of my teaching. Um, but I would love to hear what people want to see more of. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and make those in the future. In the YouTube description, I'm going to post a link to this graph um, so anyone can download this and use it as their reference. Um, and yeah, we will see you guys soon.